So in this video, we're going to be integrating exponential functions, bases other than e. So let's just go ahead and review how we find derivatives of functions that have bases other than e. Let's do a couple of quick review problems of differentiating, and then we'll go back to integrating. Consider the composite exponential function a to the u. If I were to bring in the derivative operator with respect to x, and differentiate both sides of the equation, I would end up with the necessary rate of change of y with respect to x. What we did over here, we're finding the derivative is the chain rule because it's a composite function. Like the natural exponential function, the derivative of a to the u is itself. Then we multiplied by the natural log of the base a. And then we multiplied by the derivative of the exponent with respect to x. So that would be du dx, or you could call it y prime. Quick review of differentiating a composite exponential function. So let's put that into place with the function then. Consider the composite exponential function 3 raised to the power of 2x minus 4. If I wanted to differentiate, okay, I'd bring in d over dx on both sides of the equation. Quick reminder, it's not necessary. You can, you don't have to. Your work follows and shows nicely what you're doing. So identifying this as not a power function, but an exponential function and the necessary rule, okay, the derivative is the function itself times the natural log of the base 3 times the derivative of the exponent, which would just be 2. Okay, and certainly we want to be careful here to note that it's not going to be 2 times 3. This will not become natural log of 6. You might want to readjust, reorganize, uh, switch the order, and put a 2 in front. Okay, and sometimes you'll see it written like this. Um, you'll see it written 2 ln 3 as a constant multiplier, all of this in front of 3 raised to the power of 2x minus 4. All right, so the purpose of this video is to integrate these types of exponential functions, and I just thought it'd be helpful if we revisit how to find a derivative of one of those. Okay. All right, let's consider the integral of this exponential function, just a parent function. I don't know what a is, but I'm just integrating the parent function with whatever base a is. Okay, the antiderivative, okay, it's similar to the e to the x antiderivative. Um, the antiderivative is going to be itself. And instead of multiplying by the natural log of a, as we did when we differentiated, integration is an inverse operation to differentiation. So instead of multiplying, we're actually going to divide the function by the natural log of a. Okay. So maybe you can kind of use that to help remind you, okay, if I'm differentiating, I multiply by the natural log of the base. But when I'm integrating, which is an inverse operation, I perform the inverse operation of division. All right, we're probably not going to see this kind of problem all day long. We're going to see a more complicated or, if you will, composite function and be asked to integrate that. So if you're integrating and you've got to figure out how to integrate something and you identify the integrand as an exponential function, think of this rule right here. If I can get the integrand to look like a to the u du, using our u substitution strategy, if I can somehow make it look like this, um, then I can find an antiderivative, which will be itself, a to the u, divided by the natural log of a. And with indefinite integration, of course, we have the plus c. All right, so these are the two rules right here, basically, that we're going to be working off of. And um, I have a few examples for you. So let's take a look at number one. All right, we already noticed that it's not a basic uh, parent function here. It's a little more complicated. This is not just 2 to the x. Uh, it's 3 to the x. So let's go ahead and use u substitution. Okay, the most obvious thing on an exponential is that u is going to be the exponent. All right, noticing over here that we would need a 3 to be able to replace this whole expression with du. And so we'd have to bring out a one-third. 
All right, converting over to the u integral, 2 to the u du. This exactly matches this formula right here with the base of 2. So now I'm ready to integrate. And 1 third is just a constant multiplier. It just comes along as a factor. So it looks like it's going to be 2 to the u, u being 3x divided by the natural log of 2 plus c. Uh, you can combine this and stack it as one fraction, 2 to the 3x over 3ln2. That's certainly one way you could rewrite this. And just real quickly, reminding you about log functions. Um, there's so many properties and, and things that you can do that you can really do so many different rewrites um, on something. Um, let me fix this. That should be a 2 right there. Uh, this is certainly one answer too. Also, you could move the 3 as an exponent, and this would become natural log of 8. Um, but you're really not simplifying it in that case. Um, simplifying would mean that you want this to be the smallest value you can have here, uh, which means to rewrite it as a power and move that power over here as a coefficient. So likely you would see the answer expressed like this. Okay? All right, let's look at example two. Um, this one seems to be pretty straightforward right here. When I look at this, I identify an exponential function. And so I begin to think about this integration formula. So um, if that's going to be the case, I'm going to pursue a u to be the exponent of sine x. And I think we can real quickly see that the derivative um, is present as another factor, which is necessary. All right, so then coming back here, uh, it doesn't look like I need to bring in anything. So I'm going to switch all the way over to the u integral, 5 to the u du. I'll work across at this point. Uh, the antiderivative, lose the integral, lose the du. You perform the calculations. Okay, if you want to think of it as disappearing, that's fine. But um, you've actually performed the calculations of integration, so um, they are gone. So antiderivative is 5 to the u divided by the natural log of 5 plus c. All right, taking a look at example three, we have multiple terms. So we can use the um, sum and difference rule for um, integrals to separate. Uh, you could physically separate them, um, putting an integral symbol and differential on each piece and integrating them individually. Um, it's pretty, um, you know, it's pretty basic integrand. So I don't think I need to separate it. I think I can handle each term and not worry about the separation part. So the antiderivative here. 5 to the x, natural log of 5, minus 2 to the x, divided by the natural log of 2, plus c. Okay, for our final example here, um, I, I do identify an exponential function. Uh, that's probably the first way I'm going to go is uh, looking at that exponential function. And if I'm going to attempt to use, uh, you know, that particular rule, then u would have to be negative x cubed. And it looks like it's all going to work out. The derivative is going to be negative 3x squared dx. All right, so I'm going to do a little rearranging here just to make me feel a little bit better about the problem. I'm going to have 6 raised to the negative x cubed power times x squared dx. And as I monitor and adjust and I come back here and look and see what I need, I've got the x squared dx part. I need to bring in a negative 3. And so that requires the reciprocal out here. Looks like I'm ready to switch over to the u integral. Negative 1 third integral. 6 raised to the u. All of this will be du. It matches the integration formula, so we're good to go. Negative one third times six raised to the u, or negative x cubed, divided by the natural log of six plus c. Okay. That's it. Pretty easy um, integrating uh, exponential functions basis other than e.